Hi everyone, this is Deborah. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use a sewing machine. This is a very basic video for those people who don't know anything about sewing machines. So if that's you, keep watching. A sewing machine will normally have one or two of these things and this is where your cotton reels go on. They just pull up and down. So your cotton reel has a hole in the bottom and you put it on there through that center hole. And you need to learn to know how to thread a basic machine. Most machines will thread very similarly to how this one threads. I've just moved my camera and I'm going to have to do that a couple of times in this video to get it all in. So there's usually something like this. Now this is an older machine. My new machine doesn't have this. But if you've got a machine where you have to have different settings to thread your bobbin versus sewing then you've probably got something like this on the top and I'll show you the bobbin threading later but for this one it's usually numbered that's also what I like about Janome so your first one comes from your cotton reel and I usually just put some light pressure on my cotton while I'm doing this and it just tucks under there it doesn't look like much but if you don't have your machine threaded correctly it's not going to sew correctly and then you take it down where step two is. Now I will change the angle of my camera in a moment and show you step two. So that is, I've done step two. Now I'm just turning the knob at the side. And again, I'll go over this a couple of times with different angles so you can see what I'm doing. Bring the thread up and it loops under this bar here, which is number three. You can see there's a number three with a little loop around it. And then we go down through that this gap here again and we'll come down the bottom. So I'm gonna show you all of that now from a different angle. So once you come through two, you bring it down through the slot here and you can see the number two on the machine there and you loop it around and then you take it back up. So I'm just going back up through that top loop. So that's that piece of silver that's at the top there. And then you bring it down again. And you can see there that the thread is now in this piece up here. Now I'll come down to the actual mechanism that's down here. And then it goes under this bar that's here at the, this little bar that comes across here from left, I'm sorry, from right to left. And then there's another piece here. There's a little tiny little thing that you can see there. You see if I put my finger on it, you can see it's a little silver piece with a hook on it and you hook it in there and then you come down to the actual machine. So here's the needle and now you thread the needle and you thread it from front to back. That is pretty standard in most machines, I believe, but you would have to check your own machine if you've got a manual. Thread your cotton through there and just pull it. Now while I'm on this view, I will talk about the foot now the foot of the machine is this piece here. It's the piece that sews through the fabric and things like that, or your paper in this instance. There are lots of different feet that you can get for your machine. This one is a standard foot and they are quite easily changed. So with this one, there's a little bar at the back here. I'll show you that little thing that you can see here. And to change the foot, you just press that and it drops off. And then most feet will have different sorts of things on them. In this instance, it's a little bar across there. And that's what that thing is clipping into, that little bar. So this piece here on the foot, it also has a little bar on it. And it's clipping into there. And I'm just lowering the, the foot or the press of foot it's sometimes referred to. And by doing that, it clips itself back in and then you can come up again. Now the bar I'm using to lower the presser foot with is this one here. So this one's on the side, sometimes they'll be on the back, but mine is on the side on this machine and that takes the presser foot up and down. Now most machines will also have a light that turns on when you turn the machine on. This has a light, but I've actually removed it because it's too glary if I'm filming on the machine to have the light on but it does actually come down from, I think it's in here, and it puts the light on this area so that you can see what you're doing. 
to sew, you need both a top and a bottom thread. And we need to look at where you find your bobbin. So that's the bottom thread is called is where your bobbin is. So it's called a bobbin. First of all, I'm going to take this piece off. This will differ on all machines, but this one has some hidden storage in here. And on this machine, to take this off, you slide it all across, and then it will come off as one set. But obviously to sew, you need it back on because it also provides the work surface, and it just slides back on. So it just clip, clips out and in. So this is part of your work surface when you're sewing. But I'm going to slide that off because I wanted to show you the bobbin. So on this machine, it comes down from here. Now on my new machine, it drops in from the top and you can see it and it's really great. But this is an old sort of more mechanical machine, so it doesn't. Now this is the bobbin here. To get the bobbin out, you'll note that there's a little loop that comes out here. See this thing here moves? And also note this piece here that sticks up and it sticks into this little notch here and that needs to go back where it belongs after you've changed the bobbin. So to get the bobbin out, you just pull that loop back, that little bit of metal back and pull it out. So there's that little bit of metal. It's like a little hinge bit and there's the bit that sticks up here. And that needs to go back into this notch when you return the bobbin to where it goes. So to change the bobbin, you pull it out. Well, you wouldn't pull it out because, well, it would be empty. And you position it so that when you pull it, let me just get this in shot. So I've got the bobbin out of its casing completely. And when you pull it, you need to have it so that when you pull it, it's going anti-clockwise. See how that's rotating anti-clockwise? That's how you need to put it back into your bobbin holder. So I'm holding my bobbin holder up and I've got my thread so it would pull anti-clockwise and I pull it in. And then if you look on the top here, you will see this little piece of metal which is laying over the top of this piece. And here there's a little tiny slit and that's where we're going to put the thread. So you put the thread in that slit and then just slide it under that little bit of metal that's on the top and then pull it out. And again, you'll notice that it's still going anti-clockwise, okay? And then you hold the whole mechanism and turn it so that you need to hold so the bobbin doesn't fall out. If I let go, the bobbin will fall out and hold that clip that we had before. Hold that up and push it back into the slot with that notch matching and you probably heard it click in then and that's what it does and now you've got your thread out the bottom here and you need to get it through this hole at the top so to do that take your upper thread and hold on to it and then wind your your machine and I'll show you where I'm winding that in a moment down and you can see the bobbin turn and that bottom thread move and here it comes into the top space and then just pull it out, okay? Now you've got no thread down here at all, so you can shut this up and just tuck it back under the ne under the um, presser foot there. So you've got both threads and the bottom one is coming through this hole. Now we can put this back on, okay? So this is, for a start, this is the on and off button and this here is where the power cord goes in. So the power cord looks like this and it pushes into there and that's how you know that you've, you know, then you've got power to your machine. And one end of the cord is going to the power point and this end here is going to the foot. And I'll show you, this is a different foot <laughs> than the presser foot. This is the foot that operates your machine. And to operate your machine, now I haven't got that turned on, otherwise it would start working. You just press it with your foot and you'll get used to that. You sit it on the ground and you press this other portion with your foot and that's what makes the machine go. It's a bit like learning to drive a car. At first you'll be all jerky and you'll probably go too slow or too fast. But I, very quickly you'll establish how to make the machine run. So this is what I was winding before. That's just, uh, I showed you the top view of it and you can see down here 
this is the on off button and where the power cord would go and I was winding this around just manually to get that bobbin thread up. The other thing that this does is when you need to change your bobbin and thread some more cotton onto your bobbin you pull it out on this machine it's a release function and you hear it click there what that does is it disengages the presser foot from going up and down and that's what i need to do when i change the bobbin when i put thread on the bobbin for this particular model of machine to fill the bobbin on this machine I need to first of all take a bobbin and I've got one here so you need to make sure you've got the correct bobbin for your machine there are different bobbins for different machines there are also some generic bobbins but I just make sure that I buy a packet that's suitable for a Janome so to change the bobbin you need to have some thread so I'm just going to pull all that thread out now you put it on the same holder and remember I talked about this other piece before well that is what you use so I'm going to loop the thread around that through there because that's what you use when you're filling a bobbin now the other thing when you fill the bobbin is you'll see that the bobbin has got a little hole in here let me get that in shot for you there you go so in here there is a little hole okay and you need to put your thread in from the bottom so under in the middle of the bobbin there and push it out that hole this will make your life so much easier than trying to wrap it around okay and you can see I've got it in there now and then you put it on this little stand here and you just push it on there make sure it's not caught up and it'll click onto there and then on this machine you push that to the right so that it engages with this little wheel here and that's what causes the when the um, footer press footer um, pedal is pressed down then and this is disengaged it engages that little thing there to spin around and spin the bobbin and fill the bobbin so now what I do is I hold that thread that I've got at the top and I just hold it gently because it's going to spin around and I put my foot on the pedal and you can see that that starts to fill. I cut that off on the top so I don't have a long thread otherwise it gets caught up in it'll get caught up and I'll show you where it'll get tangled around the bottom of that so I'm just going to put all that back on just be aware that you don't want it tangled around that so I've tightened it all up again and now I can put my foot back down and I'll fill that bobbin. Once the bobbin gets to the fullness that it needs, it will stop automatically. And you see there it's now just stopped. It won't go any further because this little wheel and that amount of cotton on there has come to determine that it's time for it to stop. It won't take any more click it to the left again and pull it off and then just cut that thread and you've now got a bobbin that is full of thread and then once you finish you need to press this back in and that will then engage the presser foot so that the machine will work for the sewing not the bobbin filling so it's like a, a switch you switch it one way and then the other now we'll talk about these knobs here so as I said this is a very simple machine it does do stretch stitching and there are a little example of the different things it can do over here but because I use this just to sew paper now I only ever use two things I use a straight stitch and I use a zigzag stitch to sew on the machine I set it to either the straight or the zigzag now on this machine the straight on the selector is an A and then the length can be anything you want but I find this machine around two and a half is perfect for what I want to do you put your paper underneath your foot or your fabric if you're using fabric and then I always hold my threads for the first couple of stitches that's just habit from a lifetime of sewing when machines weren't that great and things used to get caught up if you're finding that when you start to sew your bobbin thread pulls and gets all um, caught up 
it may be because you don't have enough of, enough of a tail on it. So make it a bit longer, but it's just habit for me now. And I don't have to do it on my new one, no, but I do still do it with this one. And then you just start to sew. Again, I'm using the presser foot. It's on the ground and I've got my foot on it and I'm just sewing along. So you can sew fast or you can sew slow. It's really up to you. I would think when you're first starting out that you want to sew quite slowly because then you'll see what you're doing. The other thing is don't put your hands anywhere near that thing because it, it will actually take your finger and I've sewn my finger and it's not pleasant. I'm sure there are many of us who've sewn our fingers over the years and you need to keep it away from that presser foot and there's no need to really, it's just guiding it. It's with paper, it's just really guiding it to make sure it goes where you want to go. So to release the, the bobbin because it's caught up now, I use this wheel here and I just manually turn it once. No, I've got my my needle up and my thread up make sure your needle is always in the up position i still give it a turn because it releases that bobbin and then it will pull through okay and then you can cut that thread off there is a little cutter on most machines this is mine here and you can actually then just pull your threads through and there's a little blade in there that will cut things off i don't use that very much i tend to use my scissors and just cut them off and then I always just release more cotton back. That's just habit once I've cut and also push it to the back. Now to change that thread length so it will zigzag, I'm gonna change it over to a C. On the machine, you'll see these little dashes that are little and then they get bigger and bigger and bigger until they hit the C. That is the width of the thread that you're doing. So the width of the zigzag. And then for the length, I'm changing it so that it's not as long. So I'll get a short, fat zigzag stitch. So I'm gonna change it down to about one and a half. And then I'll put the paper back in. You can see from our last stitching, this is what it looks like. And I put the foot back down, hold my threads again, and then I'll sew some zigzag. You can see that coming out the other end. I've got some zigzag happening there. Now, if I wanna change back to a straight stitch, I don't do that while the needle is in the down position. And by that I mean it's into this hole here. You can see it going away into the actual paper. I actually use that wheel on the right hand side to manually bring it up again. And then I can change it back by setting my dials back to what I want. So in this case, A and two and a half. And I can now keep sewing. And I can do a straight stitch again. You can see that there. Now I also want to show you another piece that's on the machine. So this thing on the machine here is the reverse stitch. So if I want to go backwards, then I would use this reverse stitch. And how you do that is you can sew and while you're sewing you hit that and it'll go backwards and you release it and it comes forward. So I'll just show you again. As you're sewing or even now I can hit this button down and I can it just it won't click down. It's made just to do an end stitch so that you're securing your thread well. So when I'm sewing in my junk journals if I've got a pocket I will do this on the beginning and the end of the, you know, where the pocket sort of stops and where there's, where it goes into the journal so that I know I've got a secure thread. So we'll just try that again. And I'm just swinging that piece of paper around and I'm going to come down and start. So I'm sewing down again on a different line this time and you can clearly see my zigzag there on that thread. And I'll sew down and I'll do this button, this reverse button again. So you can see it went backwards and then came forward. So that's the reverse button. And always finish with your needle in the up position. And that is what I mean, that the bottom of the needle is here. It's well clear of the presser foot. And then I can lift my presser foot release my under thread and pull and that will come out and then you've got a piece that's been sewn on a machine.